there are many, many reasons why a cut is made on a tree. This is an illustration of a cut that was made on a tree in order to clear the tree from roof contact and give adequate fire clearance. And so a pretty big cut was made. We've made this cut ourselves less than a year ago. As we look up into this Quarcus chrysolopus, the so-called canyon oak, a native oak to California, we made a fairly large lateral cut to a new leader. And that cut was made, again, for roof clearance and fire clearance. But we've allowed the epicormic shoots to occur around this wound in order to stimulate circulation, to bring circulation to the wound site in order to close up the rather large cut. It's probably six or seven inches in diameter, our actual excision. We have a new leader that's about four, four and a half inches in diameter, so it's a reasonable lateral leader relationship. We've tried to maintain the one-third rule of the new leader being at least one-third the diameter of the former lead, so we've cut back to a compound. Now we've allowed these epicormic shoots to occur around the injury. We don't want to remove these. Sometimes people remove these for aesthetic reasons. They want to have the tree in a nice silhouette and have nice form. But the tree produces these for a reason. The tree knows that it needs shoots and vascular circulation at this site in order to close the wound. And when we have a shoot around an excision, around a large cut, we want to allow those to run for maybe several years and remove them a little at a time, but always leaving circulation and vascular activity at the wound site so the tree has the possibility to heal this wound up. We definitely want this wound to heal. This is a large cut. We don't want this to turn into a decay site or a cupping wound. So we're going to allow these adventitious shoots around this cut to occur for several years.